What's up YouTube? This is Ali Hader here, also known as Your Heart Doc. Thank you for checking in my channel. Today we're going to be talking about EKGs. So by far the biggest request I get on my Instagram account is people who want to learn more about EKGs. I think the key is not to get bogged down by trying to memorize criteria, but to get a good hold on the basics and the fundamentals and the mechanism. So today I want to go over the basics about what is going on during a EKG tracing during a single cardiac cycle. So where do those waves and intervals actually originate from within the conduction system of the heart as we go through an entire cardiac cycle and heartbeat? If we can get a hold on that, it's really gonna help us out. So we're gonna be using my little iPad here, so let's get to it. So here we go. All right, we're gonna dive right into it. This is a diagram that I've created of the heart and its conduction system. Just to orient ourselves, up here is the right atrium, here is the left atrium, down here is the right ventricle, this is the left ventricle. Right here is the tricuspid valve, this is the mitral valve, and here is the interventricular septum. Um, these are the important landmarks you gotta understand when we're gonna go through this. So, the first thing you're gonna notice on a surface EKG is the isoelectric line, okay? This is um, the period of um, non-conduction, so there's no depolarization going on here, um, nothing's firing, this is what you're gonna see in between heartbeats. And um, the first thing that starts out the cardiac cycle is the firing of the sinoatrial node, right here in number one. And that's what's gonna start our cardiac cycle in the EKG. All right, when this fires, um, that's not the P wave, okay? When this fires, this sends a signal throughout the atrium. It's the signal of depolarization throughout the atrium that's gonna give us our broad-based P wave. So, the P wave is actually form number two by the depolarization of the atrium. So when your P wave is enlarged or abnormal, this can be indicative of right atrial or left atrial enlargement. Now, once those signals travel through the atrium, they're gonna enter this kind of final common pathway or this gatekeeper, if you will, the AV node. And that's because the only way a signal can get from the atrium to the ventricle in a normal heart is through the AV node. Now, there are other circumstances that can exist, such as an accessory pathway, like you see in WPW, where actually conduction can go down through the pathway into the ventricle in an abnormal situation. But aside from that, everything's going through the AV node. Now, there's a delay when you get things through the AV node. Looking a little closer, signals that hit the AV node from the atrium, there's gonna be a slowing of conduction before it hits the ventricular side, okay? This slowing of conduction is our PR interval, okay? And this can be influenced by the autonomic nervous system. High vagal tone will increase your PR interval. Similarly, certain medications can also impact AV nodal conduction, such as digoxin, for example, a common one that can um, increase your PR interval because it's reducing um, AV nodal conduction by way of increasing vagal tone. So getting back to our diagram here, this here hence is the PR interval. That is the delay through the AV node and that is again number three over here. Once conduction leaves the AV node, it's going to enter a super important structure, the bundle of his. This little bundle of his right over here. This is a specialized and important conduction um, tissue that is basically the final common pathway down to the ventricles. It's sort of the left main of the conduction system. This is sort of represented here near the end of the PR interval, although you can't really see the his conduction on a surface EKG, but this is a very common um, bundle that we evaluate when we're doing an EP study or an electrophysiology study to figure out um, if someone has advanced conduction disease. Block in the level of the his. So if you have block in this conduction tissue, this is high grade block, so Mobitz 2, third degree, okay? These are the blocks that often will require pacemakers when they're occurring at the his. Whereas blocks the level of the AV node are often a first degree block or a Wenke block or a Mobitz 1, okay? These are often due to high vagal tone and not um, as serious. So, um, once conduction leaves the his, it's going to enter down into the uh, rapidly conducting bundle branches through the ventricular septum. And this is the left bundle, 
and the right bundle. Now the left bundle is, is divided into the posterior fascicle, left posterior fascicle, and the left anterior fascicle. And these are all kind of fast conducting highways and signals are gonna be going down rapidly into these little Purkinje fibers, which are also kind of specialized rapidly conducting tissue. At the same time, conduction is gonna be doing the right bundle, okay? Depolarizing the right ventricle. The idea is to get a uniform, simultaneous depolarization of the heart in unison. And that's what's gonna be giving us our QRS complex. And this is the highest of voltage you see on the EKG, and that's because the ventricle, the left ventricle, is the most important and thickest structure. What you're seeing on the QRS is actually depolarization of the myocardial cells. This is not conduction down the pathways, this is myocardial cells depolarizing, okay? That's why when you have left ventricular hypertrophy, you see this voltage is increased because you have an increased thickness and more voltage being manifested. Normal duration of the QRS is less than 120 milliseconds. And again, the PR interval less than 200 milliseconds is normal. Now, once the conduction gets down these um, pathways and depolarizes all the ventricles, you're gonna then get repolarization, and that's the T wave. This represents repolarization, okay? This is when the whole heart resets and is ready for the next signal to come down. So in a nutshell, that's kind of what's happening when um, we have one single cardiac cycle on the EKG. One important thing to remember, everything's about vectors, right? So if you look at the sum vector here in terms of electrical signal, you're gonna see an electrical signal kind of going in this direction, okay? And that's influenced mainly by the myocardial cells because they're providing most of the voltage, okay? But this vector, this concept of the vector is important when you're thinking about what different leads, what location they are, and what they're seeing, which we're gonna talk about later. So hopefully this is gonna give you a better sense of what's actually going on in the surface EKG, and this is gonna help you apply your knowledge and your analysis of EKGs um, as we um, move on to more, you know, advanced stuff.